Like when I did Devil May Cry 5, I had in development cutscenes where it had a lot of funny stuff going on. <laughs> that was worth a full playthrough just to see all those cutscenes. It would just have to be like different enough, I get it. Yeah, like be different enough for me to want to stream it, but also and also entertaining enough for me to want to actually like sit down and play it for some hours. So I'm thinking, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look on mods. Cause sometimes people will just make mods that are really good. Like you get, sometimes you'll get skin mods, sure. But other times you can just end up getting mods that like change the game in a lot of different ways. At this point, I wasn't even trying to like start shit with the Persona Phantom, I wasn't even trying to hate on Royal, I was merely just trying, hey, could I, get, could I, like, look for something to help, you know, make things a little more interesting when I play it? It felt depressing. It really did. There was nothing? It, it, it was almost like there really, I really wish there was nothing. Because there was, like, somebody made, hey, uh, the new character in the game, well, we're gonna have a complete overhaul where you actually play the story as that character. I'm like, oh wow, that sounds really cool. And it's like, oh, it's 90% in development, it's, it's almost done. Turns out the person who made the mod went on a complete and definite hiatus and said, hey, if anybody wants to take over at, with my mod, you're more than welcome to. Uh, and it has been, I think, I don't know how long, but it has been like pretty long since it has actually come back up. So, I think it's just kind of dead in the water for right now. So that's a shame. Ooh. And then I was looking and it was just like, not really any skin mods, not really any like fun cosmetics or anything. The only one where it's just like, I came across like, oh, we're featuring a new, like this new big mod. Like, oh, this is a really big mod. All right, let's see what it is. And the cat in Persona 5, people were like, well, because everybody hates him so much, I've modded him so that he's not in the game, period. And it's just like, I say this with no no snark, no sarcasm, no wit. Some of y'all gotta stop playing this game. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real, some of y'all gotta stop playing this game. When a fictional anime cat has gotten to the point where now people want to take it into account where they just remove him entirely, it's just like, it, it just depresses the fuck out of me. I see it. And this is sort of what made me want to get into, like, Sonic Adventure DX for a stream. I looked up Sonic Adventure, just the first game. Dreamcast version, not really anything much to talk about. There's not really any mods whatsoever, it's just kind of, eh. But I looked up the DX for, like, PC and Steam. The PC rendition of Sonic Adventure, the mods, oh god, there are so many. It is, <laughs> it is actually, it, it just took me aback. You get to play as, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, but as a Jet Set Radio character. Somebody modded to call in, somebody modded Cream the Rabbit, and somebody modded Rouge the Bat. And these aren't just, like, skins. They also went out of their way to, like, add full-on voice lines, new themes, even, like, new storylines. That, it's just insane, like, the amount of just, like, effort the Sonic fan will put into a game like that. That is something I look at, I'm like, you know what, I would love to make, like, a full livestream session of playing that version of Sonic Adventure DX. And it just did not work on the Steam Deck. I tested it out on my own computer. It, I got the mods to work and everything, it works perfectly fine, just on Steam Deck, I, I, I can't even mod it to begin with because the launcher doesn't even want to install.